it's 12, one after 12. I'm gonna get started. This is the budget committee, or budget hearing rather, for the downtown committee special assessment. Uh, my name is uh, Khalid Bay. I am the chair of the Committee for Economic Development, Downtown Metropolitan Planning. Uh, we also have present starting from the right, uh, Fifth District Councilor Joe Driscoll, Councilor at Large and Majority Leader Steve Thompson. Uh, to my left, Councilor at Large Tim Rudd, and to his left, Fourth District Councilor Latoya Allen. How you doing, America? Hi, good. How are you? Uh, if you would like to introduce yourself and who you have with you, and then provide us your overview, appreciate sure. it. Uh, my name is Marika Trier. I am the executive director of the Downtown Committee of Syracuse. And joining us today, we have a couple of our board members. Tony Fiorito is our new Downtown Committee board chairman. Uh, Joanne Gagliano uh, from EDR Companies is our vice chair of the Downtown Committee Board of Directors. And Alberto Bianchetti is another one of our Downtown Committee board members. Uh, so what I thought I would do is all of our board. Oh, and Greg Tripoli, um, perfect timing, Greg, uh, is another one of our downtown committee board members and is the chair of our security liaison committee that we introduced this past year. Uh, so what you have in front of you is, uh, I thought I'd walk through a presentation of who we are, what we do, and how we allocate the downtown special assessment funds. So briefly, the downtown committee of Syracuse, we're a 501c4 not-for-profit corporation whose mission is downtown's revitalization. Our boundaries are shown on the map below. We have an 82 block district that is bound by 690 to the north. Uh, the current 81 viaduct uh, for right now is our eastern boundary. Uh, Adams Street is to the south and um, Onondaga Creek uh, Falls is our western boundary. Um, I was celebrating our Interstate 81 community grid news. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the downtown committee, we uh, work in partnership with the city of Syracuse. We represent the downtown property owners, businesses, residents, our constituents. We provide enhanced services to the downtown district because it is such a population center for our community. We operate in four primary program areas. And if you turn the page, our, our first one is environmental maintenance. Our goal with the environmental maintenance program is to ensure downtown is attractive, accessible, and clean. So to accomplish that goal, we provide a number of different functions. We do daily litter patrol. Uh, we are in charge of the street furniture replacement and repairs during the summer months. We just did this yesterday for the first time. Is we mow lawns, we trim hedges. In the winter months, we provide snow plowing assistance to downtown properties. We do not assume the responsibility of plowing the sidewalks, but we do provide a minimum clear path to ensure that visitors and employees and residents can access uh, their buildings and, and places of employment. Um, as far as streetscape maintenance, we uh, flush the sidewalks, we uh, do gum busting, we clean up doorways, um, we'll do brick repair, we'll do graffiti removal. Pretty much all of the non-glamorous activities that happen in public spaces, our crew works to address so they do not become uh, long-term enhancements to the district. We provide a number of beautification programs, and again, the goal of these is to enhance the streetscape experience. Uh, the items listed in the bottom slide here are all uh, sponsored activities. So these are areas where we go out and secure additional funding on top of the downtown special assessment to be able to enhance downtown to deliver these programs. So one of our most visible programs is the Hanging Flower Basket Program. This year we have 335 baskets, which will go up just after Memorial Day. As part of that, we go out and secure sponsors, and the sponsors pay for the three water and crew members that we bring on for the season. We uh, plant new trees, we water the existing trees, we pay for tree pruning uh, to maintain the infrastructure that we have. We operate a partners in planting program, so we get sponsorships from companies and we provide a half day cleanup and planting activity for them, and their sponsorship goes to pay for the maintenance of the space. Uh, the last few years, one of our more visible locations has been Hanover Square. In the summer months, you'll notice the purple petunias, the potato vine. Uh, that is something where we are able to augment what the city of Syracuse does. They, uh, unfortunately, those several years did not have enough budget to pay for the beautification activities. So we were able to work in partnership with them to go out and secure a sponsor who was able to pay for those flowers and then pay for the maintenance for the season. So we were able to beautify a city park with those funds. Um, coming up this Saturday, we'll have our annual Earth Day cleanup where we get about 400 volunteers that uh, clean up the gateway locations to downtown Syracuse. And we also uh, will refurbish murals when we get those funds. 
Um, on the next page is just a couple of different examples of murals that we have refurbished. These were paid for uh, through grants that we secured through CNY Arts. We also provide downtown security, which is at the bottom of page three. Our goal with security is to proactively address our constituent needs and the quality of life concerns experienced in downtown so that we maintain our status as one of the safest neighborhoods. We work in very close partnership with the Syracuse Police Department and we hire retired police officers who provide a patrol for downtown, a foot patrol for downtown uh, seven days a week now, thanks to some additional funding through the Syracuse Industrial Development Agency. Previously, we had been Monday through Friday, primarily the daytime hours. Uh, thanks to additional side of funds, we were able to add evening patrols Monday through Friday, which has been very much appreciated by our constituents and, and noticed because they're on that walking beat. And we also do have Saturday and Sunday patrols, uh, which is important because right now there is no weekend coverage through the police department for downtown Syracuse. Um, on the next page, on page four, you'll see uh, some of the uh, additional security programs. We have a special 423 help phone number available to anyone in the downtown district that they can call with a non-emergency. That rings into a storefront where the phone call is answered and then deployed either to the downtown security or the SPD depending on the nature of the call. We just moved into a new storefront about one year ago located on Harrison Street where the former, where the events company used to be located. That's now been converted into an information storefront on the front end and on the back side of it is where our downtown security and the downtown SPD beats of officers operate out of that storefront. We provide personal safety seminars to downtown businesses and also do security audits for retail establishments. And then as part of that, we distribute uh, what we call security smarts brochures, so common sense safety tips um, that are handy no matter where you are. Things about you know when you're walking down the street, making sure you're paying attention to your surroundings, don't leave your laptop or other valuables on your car seat. Uh, but we find those personal safety seminars and having more of an officer-friendly approach helps us to bridge a gap between law enforcement and our downtown constituents. On the bottom of page four, we have the locations of our 17 security cameras. So through uh, various grant resources, we are able to purchase and we maintain 17 security cameras throughout downtown Syracuse. So we provided some imagery of where those cameras are placed. Those are wired directly into the SPD system. So those were purchased, again, intended to be an additional tool for the Syracuse Police Department to utilize for downtown and not intended to replace uh, security officers. Um, for economic development on page five, our goal here is to uh, business retention and recruitment. Uh, we want to attract new tenants to downtown Syracuse, but also retain the tenants that we have. We collect uh, real estate information for that 82 block district. We do that on a quarterly basis. So at any given time, we're able to let people know what the vacancy rates are, what's the average rent, what spaces would be available if you're looking to locate in downtown, dis the downtown district. We work to fill vacant spaces. Uh, we pride ourselves in being able to provide accurate market data on the district because we have an economic development team that is constantly watching, collecting, and analyzing this information. And economic development, along with our other programs, provide the support needed for downtown's continued growth. Um, oftentimes, we are a first stop for people looking to locate into downtown with a new business. So we work in close partnership with the Department of Business Development with the city. And um, when people are looking for space, we'll put together customized property packages, and our goal is to make it as easy as possible for someone to locate in the district. So that may mean providing them with a list of available space. It may be serving as a liaison with the city of Syracuse to make sure that uh, we're helping to provide support to get uh, permits through the process and understand what information is currently needed. We'll go after different incentives and financing opportunities so we can be a pass through for grants secured to downtown Syracuse. But then we also secure grants uh, to implement special projects. And then we do have several special programs that address vacancies in downtown. So we'll do a pop-up retail program, uh, which is good for entrepreneurs testing out the market. We are currently in round five of our Art in the Windows program, which we have an example of that in the bottom of page five. We work, uh, we secure funds, and then we work with building owners and artists to showcase available retail spaces as opportunities by using local artist talents to showcase the space and activate the street level. 
On the next page, on page six, we have an outline of our different recruitment resources. So these are marketing materials. Our goal is to present downtown in the best light possible. So we provide these materials to property owners and leasing agents to use to best promote downtown Syracuse and the amenities that are available. Uh, the bottom page gives an overview of our web-based resources. Our website, downtownsyracuse.com, is the resource for anything you would want to ever know about downtown Syracuse. And we also have a list of all of the financial resources and training opportunities available for new businesses um, and developers in our community. Page seven showcases some of our statistics and information. We create uh, customized property packages, so if you are looking for, I'll say, 5,000 square feet of retail space, we can put together a list of potential spaces for you, let you know what the square footage is, what amenities are included, how much it costs, who to contact. We act as a liaison between the brokers who have the spaces and people looking for spaces, again, to add that customer service element. And depending on the nature of the tenant, we may do uh, participate in the tour as well. So we may go to each of the different properties to sell the benefits of those specific locations and why a business may want to locate in this specific place. We also do semi-annual office reports. So I mentioned that we collect data on a quarterly basis from all the buildings in downtown. Twice a year, we put information out about the vacancy rates, the average rents, uh, and tenant movements within the district. Uh, and our fourth primary uh, service category is marketing and communications. So this is general image advertising for downtown Syracuse to promote it as a vibrant destination and support our downtown constituents by raising the visibility and increasing business and foot traffic, encouraging people to explore downtown's assets. On page eight, we have a, a showcase of the different brochures that we produce for downtown Syracuse, our list of businesses, we have a very popular public art and historic walking tour guide, uh, which is self-guided. We do advertisements through Visit Syracuse. We do TV commercial campaigns, and I had mentioned our website. We also have a very strong social media presence because that's how so many people get their information now. So between our constant contact email newsletters that go out every Thursday that showcase the events happening in downtown as well as what um, news were the items that have happened, we do a monthly introduction, which will set the this tone for what is happening that month, usually built around one of our different events. For instance, in February, we showcased Dining Week and the different restaurants that are participating. And then we also are active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Between those mediums, we have about 18,000 subscribers. So it's a, a powerful way for us to get information out about the district. Uh, we also organize um, events for downtown Syracuse. We call these our signature events. There is no shortage of events that happen in downtown Syracuse. All of the events that happen within our boundaries we promote as part of our newsletter, but uh, the events that we organize are specifically designed to support our downtown constituents. Uh, so walking through the calendar year, uh, we start off in February with downtown dining weeks. We started that program 15 years ago as a way to drive traffic to restaurants during what's typically a very slow time of year for dining in central New York. And that has now turned into a two week promotion and probably the busiest two weeks for those restaurants. So we get very positive feedback. And to deliver that program, that again is something where we go out and secure sponsors to provide the funding to do all the marketing around that program. If you turn the page, uh, we, in March, and then again in the fall, so we have a spring and a fall progress breakfast event where we use those as opportunities to highlight a specific theme that's driving downtown's revitalization. And we ask three different speakers or projects or initiatives to come in and give a quick overview to our downtown community of what is happening um, and how it's changing the feel of downtown Syracuse. Um, those have grown uh, in popularity. We got. Um, 336 people at our last event, which filled every seat in the room. So those are a way, again, for us to draw attention to all of the positives that are happening in downtown Syracuse because there is so much activity underway. Uh, Earth Day Cleanup, I had mentioned, um, that's a very popular volunteer event for us. About 400 participate, uh, cleaning up trash, and in return they get um, free lunch vouchers at two of our downtown participating restaurants. If you turn the page in May, on May 18th this year, we'll move to our downtown living tour. We started this event 13 years ago as a way to ensure a continuous pipeline of residents interested in living in downtown Syracuse. 
we are constantly promoting the development of residential in downtown to give us that more permanent market to attract the type of retail and services we'd all like to see. So the downtown living tour gives us a way to raise awareness of the redevelopment and housing activity underway showcase the apartments because we have a very high occupancy rate so they don't stay vacant for long but it gets people talking and it gives uh, some folks an opportunity to um, it gives them an excuse to come into downtown Syracuse have a really pleasant afternoon discover new shops or restaurants that they may not be aware of but then come back and enjoy it in the future in June uh, is a busy month for us we have our downtown annual meeting which attracts over 400 individuals to that event where we'll do a state of downtown report to uh, showcase what is happening throughout downtown Syracuse and we also provide awards of excellence where we recognize our constituents or projects or neighborhood associations for um, special activities and their contributions to the downtown district so that's a very um, fun event for our community we also launched the downtown farmers market. So every Tuesday in Clinton Square, June through October, we host the second largest farmers market in the region. We have about 50 vendors that participate and we do that as a way to provide access to fresh fruits and vegetables uh, for our downtown residents and employees. And it's also a very nice employee amenity. In July, we'll have our Syracuse Arts and Crafts Festival, uh, which again is funded wholly through sponsorships and booth fees. That takes place in Columbus Circle and draws about 50,000 people into downtown um, over its three-day run. In September, we have our Syracuse-style fashion show. That is set up on Walton Street with an 82-foot catwalk where we showcase the retailers and the high fashions of downtown Syracuse to draw attention to downtown as a retail destination. Um, and new this past year, and we'll do it again this September, we introduced downtown's first annual Employee Appreciation Week. That was a week-long event to celebrate and draw attention to the downtown quality of life if you are an employee. Uh, so coffee shop meetings, outdoor fitness opportunities, festivals, just you have so many amenities right out your front door. Uh, we wanted to not only drive traffic, uh, new foot traffic into our downtown businesses, uh, but also find a way to better engage our employees. So we included a picture of our tug of war, which was sort of our grand finale, uh, which is a really fun event. We had eight companies compete. Uh, they're already looking for uh, the event for next year. We did a post-it note war contest. So if some people weren't able to get out of their offices to participate in our free food or free seminar um, or shopping days, we were able to do um, something that not only activated the street fronts, and the windows in your downtown experience, but also engaged employees in some of these activities with their creativity. Uh, we also had a pop-up food hall event at the site of the Allen Foundation's project, where we had about 400 people come through in an afternoon testing out um, six different entrepreneurs. And then finally, uh, if you turn the page to page 14, we have our holiday program. And uh, this is something, again, we do holiday decorations for downtown Syracuse in partnership with the city of Syracuse. We do an ad campaign specific to the holidays. We do a social media promotion with all the different specials and businesses. We pay for a choir performance at Landmark Theater. Um, we have a window wonderland contest. So we had 30 businesses participate last year to decorate their um, downtown window displays for the holidays to give it that uh, feeling of nostalgia, but to activate the street. Uh, and also had that be part of a contest. And we also do billboard advertising. And then I included a picture of Dash and Dot, which is um, our downtown elves. They um, are part of our social media promotion where um, if you can guess their location, you're entered to win a gift card that's been donated by one of our businesses. So that tends to get a lot of traction and social media engagement over the holidays. So that is a quick overview of our different programs. Um, just as a refresher, um, I wanted to include a, a session of our, our primary sources of revenue. Um, over the years, we have been able to reduce our reliance on the downtown special assessment dollars to be able to accomplish what we want to accomplish. The special assessment dollars alone do not allow us to program uh, at the level we would like to for downtown Syracuse, and so that is why we have gone out and uh, been more creative with some of our different funding um, through sponsorships and ticket sales and these different promotions. Um, any surplus that has been generated from those signature events that I walked through, those are all funds um, plus our parking lot operations that go into funding primarily our marketing program. So these surplus dollars fill that funding gap that exists between the downtown special assessment and what our total budget amount is. 
Um, so this year, um, our, this coming year, our downtown special assessment accounts for about 65% of our revenue, and that other 35% is earned revenue. So money that we're bringing in through our signature events, uh, through transportation, there are three different parking lots that we operate for monthly permits and for events. And then we also have a host of smaller um, maintenance contracts uh, for public spaces that we'll enter into with individuals. Um, on page 15, um, I wanted to share a bit more about how we raise those additional dollars. Um, our downtown committee staff, and we have 24 staff members now as part of the downtown committee, um, go above and beyond to create additional revenue for downtown. In fact, um, with this year's budget, for every dollar of downtown special funds that are being invested um, into the downtown committee, our staff generates an additional 39 cents of funding for those dollars. Um, we use our staff to bring funds in for downtown Syracuse for not only the property owners, but to be able to provide additional programs for the district. Um, I mentioned our, uh, some of the additional programs that we're talking about are the beautification, I mentioned our hanging flower baskets, grants for tree plantings, um, maintenance contracts, we do these different events, which I walk through our signature events. Um, services, so security and maintenance, we were able to add weekend maintenance and security as well as evening security patrols to the Syracuse Industrial Development Agency grant. And then we also go after grant funds that are directly invested back into bricks and mortar of downtown Syracuse. So the property improvements that we secure grants for increase the city's assessment base. Uh, we are the most awarded entity for the New York Main Street grant program in central New York. We're currently implementing our sixth round of Main Street funding, and that is a $470,000 that is going directly into supporting <coughs> grants for downtown properties. Um, over the last five programs, we've brought in $1 million of grant funds to be invested in over 40 properties in downtown. Um, and that support, um, through our grant writing and economic development department, we've generated $7 million in grant funds uh, to support the city of Syracuse in the redevelopment of downtown Syracuse. And we also go after funds, smaller grants, to provide new amenities. For instance, um, in May, you will see new chess tables added to Hanover Square. So we worked in, with the Parks Department. We went after some funding. Uh, so we have a series of chess tables that will be added to Hanover Square uh, to provide a different type of uh, entertainment. And then in addition to creating additional revenue streams for downtown programs, our staff also aims to increase engagement with downtown through a series of new committees. This past year, we land, uh, launched four new committees for downtown. And this has resulted in more than 170 committee member volunteers who are participating uh, in these committees. Our security liaison committee is working on a campaign right now to uh, do a, a give where it counts type of a campaign to incre encourage people to give to agencies versus um, directly uh, to panhandling, because panhandling is the main complaint that we hear about downtown. And we also were able to secure three outreach workers for downtown Syracuse through a partnership with Onondaga County. And they'll be able to work in partnership with the SPD and our downtown security to um, help those in need. Our livability committee is working with uh, City Hall and the railroad company on a new gateway design for the West Onondaga Street uh, gateway where the bridge wall fell last year. So we've got EDR under contract uh, working on new design elements for the bridge, but also how to better program and activate the space there. We have over 50 stakeholders and property owners participating in that committee. Uh, we have a business city partnerships committee that's looking at um, opportunities to streamline the permitting process and a communications committee which helps us with messaging and getting the word out. Um, and then in addition to that, we provide staff support to our different neighborhood associations which I've listed below. Um, the new element they added was our downtown enthusiast sponsors. We started to package our activities this year, which has resulted in new sponsors for downtown Syracuse activities. Um, on page 16, as far as how we use those dollars, um, the pie chart represents what our proposed investments for programs will be this coming year. And then for comparison, in the smaller pie chart, I included our revenue sources um, for the fiscal year. Um, this year's budget um, is allocated very similarly to last year. We are not asking for an increase, uh, but you'll see again, the past two years we've increased our investments in environmental maintenance activities and security funding. And as a comparison on the bottom chart, I showed you our expenditures for the last 10 years. Um, and then the final page is just a high level, high level overview of our downtown special assessment allocation. Um, 
it's a very straightforward way to look at our budget. Um, and I show you um, by program uh, that's funded through the downtown special assessment, how the dollars are allocated for 2019-20, um, the percent of the downtown special assessment funds that have been allocated and how that compares to how things had been allocated the previous 10 years. And then the last column shows you the variance. So it's showing you environmental maintenance overall. We're spending 7% more now than we historically have spent. Um, our administration uh, dropped by a percentage. Our security expenditure remains the same. Economic development, we've increased our allocation. Uh, we hired a new staff member uh, for our economic development program. And marketing, we've decreased um, our special assessment funding. Um, it used to be historically about 11% of our budget. We've dropped that down now to 1%. We allocate the DSA dollars to the, the harder services first, and then use the surplus from our other activities to fill the gap with our marketing program. Uh, and then the last item um, I wanted to distribute for you is um, just a copy of our metrics. So this is something that we started doing um, three years ago as a way to quantify um, our contributions to downtown Syracuse's revitalization. So this provides a snapshot view of of our activities. So we've broken it into a quick view of our public space, um, economic development activities, how many um, properties we've assisted and promoted. Um, so far this year, and this is only um, year to date information, we've filled over 17 or over 700 requests for statistics and information about locating downtown and supporting properties. Um, currently administering $514,000 of grant funds into downtown Syracuse. And then our right-hand column talks about engagement, um, whether it's with the media. Um, I've done 85 speaking engagements so far this year, promoting downtown Syracuse. Um, we've engaged businesses 247 times as part of the district. So uh, we find that because our programs are so widespread, the metrics document tends to be very helpful to give people a sense of what it is um, that our organization provides to downtown Syracuse. Appreciate it, uh, America. You used up all our meat time. Uh, I tried to go fast. Presentation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm going to start uh, questions with uh, Council Allen. Thank you. Your presentation was very thorough, so not too many questions. Always. Yeah. Uh, let me go to my first. You actually answered one of my questions. It was about the transportation. Um, revenue because I just wasn't sure where you guys were collecting the money from but you kind of uh, touched on that yes yeah, so transportation um, downtown special assessment dollars do not um, play a role in our transportation funding um, we staff various parking lots um, two parking lots across from dinosaur barbecue and a parking lot north of the post standard building okay then uh, one of my questions I see there's an increase in your transportation and travel yes I'm on page 220 Under administration? This is under, yep. Uh, yeah. uh, so what um, our board is recommending is that we um, set those dollars aside to allow for uh, participation in the International Downtown Association Conference. That's something that over the years, as we had to cut our budget, we were not able to send a representative to the IDA conference. It's a three-day conference where uh, communities showcase their best practices, what they've done to activate spaces, and then we're able to use our staff to bring those ideas back to Syracuse to implement. So uh, we allocated funding for travel and registration. Okay. And not so much on the dollar amount, mm -hmm. but the machine contract, what is what is that? Oh, and as administration? Yes. That uh, is essentially our uh, subscriptions to uh, InDesign marketing software. Okay. And I think I have one we more. We produce all of our own brochures and posters. Okay. So there's special software that goes along with that. And my last question, okay. you had, so I'm on, I'm in the packet on page 15. Yep. You said you guys were hiring three outreach workers? The Onondaga County has hired three outreach workers. And so exactly what are they going to be doing? They will be, uh, they just started uh, within the last three weeks. They will be working um, with our downtown security and the Syracuse Police Department 
to not only patrol, um, patrol downtown Syracuse, but to help us understand what are some of the social service needs. And we're doing this in partnership with um, Onondaga County's Department of Social Services and the Housing Homeless Coalition. Um, so we need to better understand who is downtown. Do we have additional service needs? Is it mental health? Is it substance abuse? Are the people that we're seeing downtown some of the regulars, are they enrolled in services? Um, are, do they need to be connected to services? So these three outreach workers will be um, helping us understand and quantify who is downtown, what are their needs, and then our goal is to be preventative, so making sure that we can build the relationships and they can make connections with these individuals early in the day before behavior may escalate to help get them on a path, but then also be a liaison between those individuals and those various service providers. Okay. This is something we've been advocating for for a couple of years. And so these are just individuals that are walking around downtown, interacting with people that are downtown? and They will, yes, they're um, uh, Anadaga County employees. They will be um, patrolling downtown, but also connected right into patrolling our security. Patrolling meaning what? Walking, walking, okay. and a walking, yes. Because I'm just concerned about mm -hmm. um, just regular citizens with a, a, a work badge. So that's something where um, there will be a more formal announcement um, from the okay. county on this program, and working through now those pieces of how, how are they branded, what are their uniforms, what right. is their like, the protocol. Yeah, because yep. I, don't, I don't know how that is received by people that are downtown if it's just a normal person. It's not an officer, right? It's so not an just, officer. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's not reach worker, and they're working with our, um, they're doing tomorrow actually a ride around with our security and SPD officers to understand where are some of the areas of concern, who might some of the um, more frequent individuals be, and you know, are we making sure that we're doing our best to connect them to services? Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, Councilor Rudd, before you start, I want to acknowledge that Councilor Michael Green just joined us. I know you said your headcount was 24, but could you just give us maybe a, the headcount by program expenditure category or something? You don't have to do that now, but maybe oh. we can follow up. Sure. Most, most entities kind of give us a headcount. Oh, like sure. That. Most of ours um, are maintenance, environmental maintenance um, and security. Okay. That's all. Thompson? Uh, I asked about their headcount. I know they said they had 24, but we don't have a budget document with the headcount so on it. Um, so we, just for, just and I can, I can follow up with the specifics. We have six employees that work in our office, and the rest of them are all out, either environmental maintenance, parking lot attendants, security officers, or the three watering crew members. Okay. Um, there's, um, in, under the environmental maintenance downtown assessment fund, it's one of the only ones that appeared to go up any uh, fringe it's on salary and did you hire somebody else on there or, or was it an increase in rage wages uh, for the proposed yeah. column Propo so projected we, to proposed yep yeah, yes. um, so we had authorized um, the 236,000 number th th for this current year yep. we have um, now have two positions open so um, that's where we think we're going to end the year, just because we know we have those vacancies. But then next year, starting July 1, we anticipate we'll be fully staffed again. Okay. Um, and under security, I know these guys are retired, so they're old, but it says depreciation. Oh, <laughs> that would be for our equipment. <laughs> okay, okay. That would be the security cameras and okay. construction build out. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> not, not, the, not the employees. <laughs> okay. Awesome. That's it. Driscoll. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for your presentation. It was great. You had 6% allocated for transportation. What does that include? Salaries. How do you mean? Oh, transportation. Uh, in your spending. So you have. Yeah. So we, um, we have our own parking lot attendance. Um, so pretty much for the transportation line yep. or lines, that is primarily uh, the salaries to pay for the full-time employees that man the lots. Oh, okay. Uh, downtown special assessment dollars should not go towards that. So gotcha. they're paid for out of the revenue generated by the parking lots. Gotcha. So for, for filling vacant properties, uh, what does outreach look like? How do you find people to fill those? Who works on that? How many people? And... You know, I'm just really curious about when we have a vacancy downtown, how you're able to make those connections. How does that, you know, how does that tissue form and, and who does it? We have two staff members now as part of our economic development department. Heather Schroeder is our director of economic development and Jordan Young is our economic development assistant. So uh, it happens a number of different ways. Um, oftentimes people will come 
to us just like through a Google search or a recommendation from a property owner that they've been talking about so we can help them figure out what spaces are available and give them a sense of the market data, of rents, of downtown trends. The neighborhood and business development department also knows that we maintain this database of downtown spaces. So if they're uh, interacting with an individual who's looking for space downtown, we oftentimes will work with them to give them the downtown properties that would fill those needs. Um, if there is a tenant that a property owner is courting, they may involve us to help you know, pitch their space. So it comes in a, a bunch of different ways. Um, we work with the Small Business Administration, SBDC, um, WISE. Great. Yep. Um, and I guess my last thing would be more of a, a, a comment than strictly a question. I loved uh, the pop-ups. I love seeing like the wildflower and some of the yep. other things you guys have done. And Puerto Rico has um, uh, had a policy of allowing people to utilize space um, until the time when they when it was needed, yep. if you know what I mean. So kind of that pop-up thing yep. was kind of became a government policy for, for vacant properties that if you have something that's sitting there vacant, why not let a, a budding entrepreneur who has an idea utilize the space until someone is interested in purchasing it under the understanding that if that should happen that they would have to get out of the space in a, yep. in a sharpish uh, time frame. So um, I just, yeah, I'd like to applaud you for the pop-up efforts and, and I would say encourage you know, I would I would uh, just say you know encourage it more because I you know the wildflowers one was in that ambrosia spot and that's always been a tragedy for me. Yep. Well, it was ambrosia. I don't know if you remember I that. Do. That was yep. late late '90s. I used to play there. Well, soon so, it'll be a what? Mexican restaurant. Oh wow, Margarita's cool. Mexican. Yep. What's it called? Margarita's Mexican. Okay. It's about three months out. Great. Yep. Exciting. But yeah, that kind of thing. It makes you think of. When you're in there, you're like, oh, I forgot about this space. Yep. Why isn't somebody doing with it? It just gets that kind of you know, interest and in, in stuff back up. So and just that's something too. We have the relationships with the property owners, so we know which ones would be willing to be very flexible with their rents. And that's something with the program where they they understand if someone that's going to be rent paying at the level comes in, they move on. But if there's businesses or the folks you hear about, um, please connect them to Heather and Jordan within our team or myself, and yeah. we can connect them with the properties. And then for spaces that are unable to be occupied because they're just not up to snuff, that's where we deploy our Art of the Windows program. <clears throat> Great. And use artist work. Yeah, well, good work. Thanks. Thank you. Council Green. You do a great job. Keep it up. I have no Thank questions. you. Thank you. In the interest of, uh, interest of time, that concludes this meeting. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you want, Dave, go ahead. Yes, I'm Dave Mankwitz. I provide staff to the Cross Marshall Business Improvement District. My real job title is with Center State CEO. Jerry Dellis is here to my right. Jerry is the president of the Cross Marshall Business Improvement District, and John Vavilo is, is over there. John is the vice president of the Cross Marshall Business Improvement District. The CMBID was created back in 2002 to 2003. Its primary function is as a clean and safe district. So you'll see that 80% of the funding, at least 80% of the funding that we have go to those two categories. And I would just note that from the way at least it was uh, published, the personnel line that is shown there is actually our environmental maintenance staff, and the EM number is there as the operations expense of environmental maintenance. Um, for as, as far as programming is concerned, um, we provide daily maintenance, cleaning, trash sweeping, weeding, uh, minor painting, graffiti removal that's done by one full-time employee. Um, we also do horticulture, which is the planters and, and take care of the planting areas around throughout the district. And we do special projects, which is any repairs or replacements that need to be done to the capital improvements that were built. So those generally involve replacing broken items such as trash cans, uh, benches, uh, anything, uh, any loose bricks, dead trees. Uh, those types of works are done uh, with our environmental maintenance budget. We have a daily security patrol. We have a patrol officer who, again, is a former Syracuse Police Department officer. Um, we contract with them through the downtown committee uh, through those needs. So they patrol and respond to calls within the district. Um, we do a minor marketing role. Um, so we do have some money set aside for banners, brochures, and the website and administration provides staff oversight, uh, financing, insurance, and audit. It is a 16-member board. Of the 16 members, they are constituted that are 
uh, six from the institutions. There are two from the property owners that are elected by the property owners, two elected by the businesses, three that are appointed by the city, one appointed by the Cross Marshall Business Association, and uh, one from the Sheraton, one from the University Hill Corporation. So we meet every other month. Fuss Charles Chamber is our auditor. This is the first, as far as the budget is concerned, this is the first special assessment increase since the district was established. So we have gone with a, an assessment of $75,000 for roughly the first 18 years of the district. So the reason we requested the increase, um, most of it was dedicated to security. Over time, uh, we had to cut back on the hours of the security patrol. Our businesses and property owners were asking us to restore that. Um, so this budget will provide for a five-day, seven hours a day security patrol that will be there when the businesses are, are open. We were down to three days, and so we're, we want to bring that back. So most of the increase is dedicated to that uh, security role. We do cut back to three days a week when the students aren't there. So over the summer, you'll see that cut back because there's, uh, there's, there's fewer activities up there. In administration, we had to increase. Uh, since the time we began, SUNY Upstate had been doing our books free of charge because of changes that they have and demands they've had. They've asked uh, Center State to take that role over, which we're happy to do. There is a there's always a challenge, though, in being able to pay for the staff to do that work. Um, we are also taking over the administration at staff from uh, Center State as opposed to uh, University Hill Corporation. We also have an anticipated increase in insurance that we budgeted for. It's about $900 and, and, an, and an increase in depreciation. Again, this is, for re this is the charge, the depreciation charge for equipment that you have to have either to maintain the district or is placed within the district. And overall, we have the challenge that the improvements are getting older, they need more attention, and the cost of repairs and replacements are increasing. Now, we thought it would be opportune to make this request in this budget year because for this year, we have the first, first building in a long time that is a new building within the district. The Marshall has been built, um, and we asked the uh, City Assessment Commissioner roughly under the budget formula, what would that add uh, to the assessment district if it was fully assessed? And, it, and he estimated that would add about $12,500 in, in, in the year as it's added. So of the 18750 we are requesting in the increase, 12500 of it will be provided as the additional assessment of the, of the marshal given its size and, and, and assessment compared to what used to be there. And the, so they're gonna pay two thirds of the increase and the other 6250 are gonna be divided among the other property owners. So that's kind of a quick overview of what the budget includes and if you have any questions, Jerry I'd, or John be happy to answer them. Councilor Green. What are the seven hours? Um, we like to have them there when the businesses are open. So he generally, it's, it's, we will change it if we see different patterns of, of concerns that might be there. But generally, he is there from uh, uh, 9 in the morning till about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And then do you have reserves? And if so, how much is it? We have very few reserves. We have about $20,000 in reserves that are in, a, um, in our bank at Key Bank. So we have a certificate of deposit there. There is money that the city drew down over the years. Um, there, you know, if somebody doesn't pay their assessment and then there'll be uh, fees and other things and penalties assessed, that will build up in the assessment account and uh, for, a, for a little while there, we were actually drawing down less than what we were entitled to. So the city has a small surplus within the BID of account. That runs around eleven or $12,000. So there's a little bit of cushion there that we always leave to make sure that we don't overdraw what we're asking the city for. Thank you. Yes, I think I'm good. Just, yeah, thank you for your presentation. Good. Yeah, thank you. Yes. 
buy and watch seen it and yeah. watched it get built I but think our pro what our problem is because of all the construction I don't see that many coming toward the Marshall Street area as much although I think next year or certainly when the veterans building is done we'll see a lot more of the activity on our street I'm seeing a lot of students up university and possibly a lot of the Marshall students go right through the, uh, the mall there and go out to university of course, during the day, I'm there mainly during the day. So at night, I'm not sure. Well, the, the generally at night, the Syracuse Police Department has on on the most active nights has has a patrol that's on Marshall Street. DPS has a patrol on Marshall Street. So there is there is security forces there. I agree with you, Counselor, that with the number of increased residents that are there and this is a change for us because we used to have very few residents in the district now we have a lot more that security at night is is probably a larger issue um, than it used to be right now to be honest most of the security problems that have happened at night have been at the level where you need a response from the Syracuse Police Department and um, that's unfortunate but true but that's that's where the and a lot of those have happened even after midnight and so SPD has been very active up on Marshall Street in the later hours okay thank you and, and I knew you, you you had said last year that you were going to ask for this assessment Glad to see that. So the, the Marshall, you said that the increase for the assessment was $12,500. And how much of They it? would pay as an increment over what the building that used to be there was paying was, a, was mostly a one-story building. And okay. so it was. Okay. And then the, the veterans building, is this going to have any impact on the assessment when it's done? It would have an impact next year because in special assessment districts, all properties are assessed, including those that are typically tax exempt by the city of Syracuse. So right now, both Syracuse University with its School of Education and Krauss that has the CNY Medical Center building there and their parking garage both pay into the special assessment. So when the NVRC is built, that would, that would also pay toward the special assessment. Now there is a piece in the formula that provides for um, basically, I guess I'd call it a reduction or a discount for typical not-for-profit buildings, but they will still contribute to that assessment. So if nothing changes between this year and next year, the assessments of all the other property owners would likely go down okay. because the NVRC will have a much more assessment paying capability than the parking lot and the single story building it replaced. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, Dave, I uh, appreciate it. Just uh, for clarification, uh, and in the short, the increase is specifically due to the change in administration to Center State and Mostly uh, security. The and largest and, piece and is security. That's what I was getting okay. to. Right. Right. All right. That's all I had. Any, any other? Yeah. Actually, how are you guys? Um, I'm curious. Between um, while the students are there and the summer, uh, in regards to homeless population and how you deal with that, do you still see the same? Uh, do you have any metrics for? Uh, the homeless problem or, or how, you know, I know that's a, it's a you know, um, a, a perennial problem around yeah, there. I so don't, I was just curious. I don't have metrics mm -hmm. and the, the number has a lot of, a lot of the population um, that tends to be there is there when the students are there because <laughs> if, if they're out and they're, they're trying to ask for money the students are actually an easier target yeah. 
Uh, I mean, they just are. That and people who tend to go to the hospitals to visit relatives. I mean, they just they yeah. just tend to 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 do well among those populations. I think, and and so that is a concern for ours because we don't want to see that. Now, when the student population drops off, then you can see the the population that likes to go after that drop off with so you it. You do see a dwindle yeah, in the summer do. months. Yeah. Yeah. In the summer, you don't see as many. Yeah. How, but they'll hang out longer, those that are there. Mm. However, there is, I think you're aware of, Counselor, we have had issues um, with uh, temporary encampments being set up in places. Yeah. Um, there is an alley that runs behind Starbucks or runs between Starbucks and the Marshall Square Mall that is a blind alley. It goes back and then it turns left and it turns right. You can't see the back two legs from the street. And so there's, there's been obvious signs that people have been living there or gathering there at different times. So we went through it just the other day. There was nobody there. There was nobody, no evidence of anybody living there anymore. But that comes and goes. And, um, and maybe I might talk to my friends at the downtown committee because maybe we could get the uh, folks from Onondaga County that are, if they're willing to, to come through every once in a while up with, up with that as well. Because yeah. the same, it's pretty much going to be the same population same that's population, moving from yeah. one area to the other. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that'd be great. And, and uh, to America's point, and I know they've been looking for creative solutions, people like John Tamino and others who yep. have personal relations with some of these people, getting them the kind of long-term services rather than the dollar, you know, kind of looking at long-term solutions. I think, I think that's a great step in the right direction. Yeah, our, our officer has a, a I, I've seen him do it. He has a good rapport with them. I've seen him, you know, kind of put his arms around some of them and walk them up if they found out they were veterans or something, take yeah. them up to the VA for medical services. I mean, they've, he's been able to, to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's probably the same types of, of services that are needed. There are, there are some people there who aren't interested in services and yeah. interested in raising money. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Dave, well, thanks. I'd, I'd like to add just two things. Yeah, if you come to the mic, John. Yeah, yeah, we, we do it for the thing. I just wanted to add two things. I think one, we were questioning about the marshal. We've seen an increase in the number of foot traffic. I own J. Michael Shoes. I'm also the tenant rep for the board. Um, I would say that the a lot of the restaurants, and certainly from our perspective, we have seen a pretty substantial increase in foot traffic outside the store, whether it translates to inside or not. But I would say that that's one of the reasons that the increase in the assessment is needed because now we have more real estate. We have more things to cover. When the VA gets done, we're going to recover now two more whole blocks that are that are under construction right now that are going to need more maintenance and more attention especially from you know gum busting etc as for the security issue um, in the summertime yes there is a decrease in the amount of homeless population up there but there's an increase in a different population that we have in the evenings it's not generally prevalent during the times of day that the businesses are open but it's that late night traffic that midnight and beyond traffic that we see on the news that I think certainly, um, you know, I would say this administration is taking a little bit stronger stance on, you know, having some coverage up there on the hill, but, and that's getting better and better. And I hope this summer we'll see an improvement, but that would be more of an SPD issue. That's not something I think that we could handle it in any way, shape or form. So that would be kind of my two additions to that. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's it. All right. No further questions.